if you would ask me to describe 10 years ago or seven years ago, um, the way the immune system tackles a virus or a bacterium, I could describe it pretty methodically, or I thought I could describe it pretty, pretty methodically. And then all of a sudden, um, SARS-CoV-2 has turned all of that upside down. Um, we've suddenly realized that there are gaping holes in our knowledge about how the immune system works and how viruses can potentially contort uh, the immune system such that um, it doesn't work the way that we thought it worked. One example is, uh, is the phenomenon of long COVID. Maybe there are long virus syndromes uh, for many other viruses. And maybe we just have been ignoring them because we haven't looked. You have a chapter in your book on the pandemic that you say that, you know, right when we thought we understood uh, immune system so well, then biblically we stumbled, I think that's what you said. So, uh, you know, if you could talk a bit about that and about how the virus kind of interacted with cells, uh, you know, why was it so severe in, say, some patients then and seemingly fit? Uh, Right. So um, the tumbling that happened, I think, is uh, is very important. I've written, I wrote several pieces for the New Yorker uh, about this uh, this idea of tumbling. Um, I think that there was a moment of time in which I think we, um, as as a scientific community and as a medical biomedical community, thought that we understood vaccination, virology, and immunology um, among the deepest uh, within the scientific realms. If you took all the systems, these were things that we thought we understood very well. Um, and then all of a sudden, um, here comes a virus um, that uh, really challenges um, very fundamental things that we know and don't know about uh, how the immune system works, how the immune system... So the, for a long time, we had actually built pretty sophisticated models um, of the methodic way in which the immune system tackles a virus or a bacterium. And we thought we had covered, covered the bases. Um, if you would ask me to describe 10 years ago or seven years ago, um, the way the immune system tackles a virus or a bacterium, I could describe it pretty methodically, or I thought I could describe it pretty, pretty methodically. And then all of a sudden, um, SARS-CoV-2 has turned all of that upside down. Um, we've suddenly realized that there are gaping holes in our knowledge about how the immune system works and how viruses can potentially contort uh, the immune system such that um, it doesn't work the way that we thought it worked. Um, I'll give you one example, and there are many. I'll give you one example. One example is, uh, is the phenomenon of long COVID. So many people have talked about this. It's well known in the literature. Um, but it's raised the question, which I suppose all of you should be thinking about, um, maybe there are long virus syndromes uh, for many other viruses. And maybe we just have been ignoring them because we haven't looked. And it's because COVID was such a global pandemic that we've learned to understand the autoimmune consequences of, of COVID in the long run. But maybe there's a long influenza syndrome. Maybe there is a long Epstein-Barr virus syndrome. Maybe there's a long you know, whatever other virus that you might, might call it, whatever other bacteria you might uh, be infected with. We don't know because we haven't been looking. And so all of a sudden, our, our assumptions about what uh, the human body or how the human body deals with um, viral infections in the long run, in the 10-year run, 7-year run, et cetera, et cetera, have all been, um, I think, quite severely uh, challenged. Um, uh, you know, I have a very mild version of long COVID myself. I can, you, you may or may not, people who've heard me before can hear it in my voice. My voice has permanently changed um, since I had, uh, since I had COVID. It's technically long COVID. Um, but that's just my voice and you hear it every day and therefore you can get a sense of it. I have a sense of it. But, you know, there may be other parts of your body that are invisible, uh, invisible for the most part to medicine. Uh, which may have changed permanently because of, of one infection or another infection. So that's, I think, the, 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 the tumbling that has happened. Um, and, and a re-examination. I wrote a piece uh, for a Cell magazine called Before Virus, After Virus, A Reckoning. Um, if anyone's interested in 
sort of these ideas. Uh, I think they're very, very um, provocative ideas, but they're all in that piece. So uh, uh, do read read it um, because we may, may we may we may be we may be sort of just looking underneath the mat um, and finding all sorts of things that we hadn't discovered before. Your second question had to do with um, why did some why do some people have very severe reactions um, to uh, to COVID? Well, there we we know quite a lot about it now. We didn't know about it before, um, and all, everything about this is is surprising. Um, surprise number one is that it turns out that some people, apparently healthy, um, tends to happen more in men than in women. Apparently healthy. Um, so, so listen carefully and get this, have a pre-existing pre -existing autoimmune disease that has invisibly, because no one knew about it, invisibly affected their capacity to respond to viruses. They live in, they're living amongst us. Uh, we don't know about them. It's only when COVID strikes uh, that all of a sudden that in previously invisible incapacity to respond to the virus becomes visible. And those are people who are actually, so it's an autoimmune disease. Um, those are people who actually get very severely affected by COVID. Totally surprising re results. Uh, no one ever had even heard about it before. Um, so that's one explanation. Some people have a genetic changes or mutations or variations in genes that have to do with the immune system. Totally invisible for the most part. No one knows about it. They go about their lives normally until COVID hits and all of a sudden they uh, are become susceptible to severe COVID. Um, those are some examples. Uh, and we're discovering more and more about how some people or why some people have a greater susceptibility to COVID and to, and, uh, and to long COVID. Um, I'll throw you another sort of surprising swinger. Um, previous... Epstein-Barr virus infection um, is one of the major uh, previous active Epstein-Barr virus infection, including previous mononucleosis, um, which is a consequence of Epstein-Barr virus infection, has a strong correlation with long COVID. Why? No one knows. But um, again, we're lifting up the mat and beginning to see things that we just really hadn't known about uh, immunology, a subject that I've studied now for 30 odd years and people have studied for you know, 150 odd years, and all of a sudden are finding absolutely new things that we had no idea about before. Fascinating, fascinating uh, new ideas in, in immunology. The whole, whole new branch of immunology, um, really.